Daybreak. 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 The Daybreak Show. Citizens Forum segment of the Daybreak Show on Rock City 101.9 FM and Bola G. Easy. And so today we shall be taking a look at Nigerian university education system. Thank you very much, Bola G. And uh, my name is Paul Oni. And uh, today we've gone to bring the best again for us to evaluate the topic. As usual, you know, Citizens Forum will go to get the best. We have an eminent personality in the house today in person of Professor Olushola Mandele Oyewole, who was the Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta. You know, currently is the Secretary General of the Association of African Universities. And he has had many, many, many appointments. If I start to read them out, uh, we, 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 all our time will be taken up for that. He's a great qualified personality. You know, he was also with the higher education in the African Union, where he was head there also. So, sir, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, for having <laughs> Thank us. you, sir. Your humility is, uh, your modesty is really wonderful. Thank you for for giving us this opportunity to do this interview with you. Thank you. We want to start by asking you a current question, something that is trending right now. Uh, we heard that uh, Britain is offering graduates from African universities to come to Britain and have a, 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 a study, a work visa, work there and all that. But they, they put a caveat that they must be wrong, they must have been, you know, they must have graduated from the first 50 universities in the world, which no African university qualifies for. So, sir, what are your views? Do we say they intentionally are uh, trying to spite us or just uh, mock us? Why would you say you want to give us something and then you take it back by that kind of caveat? Why not just say that really what Britain is offering is what is called the high potential individual visa. It's not targeted at Africans but targeted at the world. But with the career that the graduates who will have such a visa for three years so that they can work freely in the UK must be candid, I mean, graduates of universities that uh, which university form at least the first 50 in the major world ranking system. And for sure, as you mentioned, as I identified, African universities are out of that rank. And the question is, why is this so? And what many people will be saying is that, why is it that African universities rank low in this world ranking system? I need to mention that ranking is a, table, is a league table in which a university are ranked based on some criteria such as academic reputation, employer reputation, faculty ratio, student ratio, citation per faculty, international faculty ratio, and international student ratio. Clearly said, take the first one, academic reputation. What are the things, what are the things that are used to measure academic reputation? Example, the number of Nobel laureates in your universities. That alone, exclude many universities in Africa from that top rank. They talk about citation per faculty, meaning that the quality of research. Unfortunately, many universities in Africa depend on foreign support, foreign funding for them to do research, while the continent that appears not to be concerned about research. Our government is not supporting research as they should, and academics in African universities have to struggle to do research for them to move forward up in their, in their career. The other thing is that international reputation. How many uh, universities in a place like Nigeria can attract foreign academics? In a place where the salaries of professor is so low, a professor in Nigeria hardly earns $1,000 today. How can they be competitive with professors in UK, in Europe, where they earn thousands of dollars in a, in, a, in a month. And these type of things, since African universities find difficult to attract 
high level qualified academics of Africa, then their ability to compete on that league table may be low. But please, the fact that we cannot compete favorably well on the league table does not mean that the academics in Africa are a failure. In fact, allow an African academic to get out to a place where research training is available, where facilities are available, they excel more than others. The same can be said about our graduates. Our graduates in Africa, for you to, uh, to me, I believe that if you can survive in African universities, you can survive in any part of the world. I've been saying it, graduates of Nigerian universities, allow them to get out of Nigeria, you find out that in, since they can survive in the harsh and difficult situation of Nigeria, they survive in any part of the world. That is one thing that Britain may not know. I don't think that Britain is fair by using the ranking of university to assess the quality of the graduates. People know that graduates of Africa, of Nigerian and African universities, when they go out of Nigeria, they are more resilient, they are more versatile, and they adapt to any situation of the workplace. So, Britain may take that decision, but I need to also mention that countries like the United States of America, countries like Canada, now have found out that graduates of Nigeria and graduates of many African universities are very good and they are, they are receptive to all of them. I believe that very soon Britain will need to change its mind. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be about the university that it should not be about, it it should be about the, the quality. In fact, many African students are skilled and they now recognize the need to get the required skills for the place of, of the market. Okay. Yeah. Sir, the Academic Union of Universities and even Polytechnics are known for persistent strikes. Should this always be the way to go? And has this strike ever yielded any positive result? Please shed light on this. Uh, going by history, I will talk like a Nigerian now. Going by history, it has been established in the Nigerian history since the, Nigerian, the history of Nigerian universities said that if not for ASU, the little amount that academics are earning today may not even be done to that level. It was ASU struggle in the past that has led us thus far. That has led us thus far. And if we have a political system that does not listen to reasoning, you give them to this type of struggle through strikes. I think it's this Nigerian situation. I don't think the Nigerian system is fair to African, to Nigerian academics. I give you, uh, Oshomole was making a statement some days ago. He said, a vice chancellor in Nigeria, when you are a vice chancellor, you earn around 1.1, 1.2 when you look at all the allowances. As soon as you, you cease being a vice chancellor, you go back to your department as a professor, only to be earning four thousand dollars. Can you believe that professors in Africa, the highest paid professor in Nigeria today, earn less than one thousand dollars, and then nothing is happening? Yet, go to the ministry, the state ministry, for example, a permanent secretary probably resigns at a salary of seven hundred dollars, seven hundred thousand. Naira per month. The retired permanent secretary keep their salary. Yet a professor will have to come down and be earning so little. I think that it's high time that we appreciate knowledge. Our problem in this country is because we do not appreciate the importance of knowledge. We are not seeing knowledge as the tool for our development. But the world now know, knows that for development, knowledge is important. In fact, those that will rule the world for now and the future are the people with the right knowledge. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. I actually want to ask that um, the presidential aspirants have like 100 million naira to be able to buy forms, you know, for them to contest. Meanwhile, of course, ASU strike is still ongoing and they are not doing anything about it. That, okay, some are, some are saying, okay, this money that you have, you have to drop, why don't you just use it to settle these people so that the students can go back to school? I think that the level of our morality in this country is doubtful. I'm also not sure that our government is sincere with the way we deal with ourselves and with our people.
take for example somebody who is buying a body a form for a particular position for 100 million we need to ask ourselves would that person statutory be able to earn 100 million within four or five years that's a question mark and in a situation where because you're a minister you, you are able to cough out or you are in the political system you can cough out 100 million at a go how many professors can do that I think that the, we need to reassess ourselves as a nation. Unfortunately, the rest of the world is not waiting for Africa. They are not waiting for Nigeria. And it's high time that our country, our country recognizes the importance of knowledge. The way things are going on in Nigeria today is as if our political group are not seeing the necessity for universities. They are not depending on the knowledge generated for universities. They are not looking at. They are not having enough problems that we desire that they need the universities. The area where they use university people are only in the area of economy and other economic advice and others. But they need to know that beyond the economy, there are other issues about universities that can contribute to our development. Therefore, we can say that our current underdevelopment in many African countries today is the outcome of our attitude to knowledge and our attitude to our university. Okay. One more from you. Okay, sir. Okay, what's, uh, what's your take on the approval of new federal and state universities? Because the federal government says that the existing universities are inadequate for Nigerian students. So what do you have to say about that? I have no objection okay. to anybody establishing as many universities as possible. Because once my, uh, my concern is whatever university you establish, please make sure that you are able to furnish that university. Mm. Make sure that you are able to provide the necessary academic number of academic staff, the number of teaching facilities to be able to really I mean, deliver knowledge to the people. Uh, you may argue, it may be correct to say that we need more university because even with all the one new ones that they are producing, many of our young people who ought to be in the university cannot get there. And things have changed in Nigeria. People are no longer deciding to go to the polytechnics. In fact, when they go to the polytechnics, they still want to advance beyond the, the polytechnics because of the, our attitude as Africans. I think my solution really is that you see the way I, I made a statement to some people some time ago. I said very, very soon, knowledge, universities will not be the only source of knowledge. And the way things are going on in the world now, people are not looking for your certificates. Your certificates mm. may not be important again. What people are looking for is what can you do? What are the skills and competences that you, you get out? I interviewed one graduate one day. I said, you've got a degree, he said, in animal breeding. I said, what can you do with this degree? That young graduate cannot tell me. I said, you need to go back to your university because they've cheated you. If you've gone to a university, you, there's no skill that can say that this is what I can do with, what I, with my four or five years in the university. Something, something is wrong. Yeah. And I be, I'm putting out something to many universities in Africa. Thank God for the place where I am now. I can speak on behalf of Africa, I can speak to African universities. One thing I'm telling people is that universities, we need to readjust re themselves to the realities of our time. It's high time universities start to produce uh, skilled graduates, just like the polytechnics. Mm -hmm. If we are not careful, graduates of the polytechnics will contribute more marketing than graduates of universities for the future. Thank you very much, sir. And that's where I will come in. You, you, you just hit the nail on the head. Let me take you off from that. Uh, you are very, 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 very correct according to what I have in my own mind. Because I would have asked you, uh, when well, you kept talking about knowledge, knowledge, knowledge in African universities, vis-a-vis -vis Nigerian universities. But this knowledge has taken them nowhere. 
Knowledge that is not translated to skills yes. and some competencies. Yeah. Knowledge can, that cannot do work is a useless knowledge. Yes. And I think that is where the problem starts from. Because, sir, look at uh, the American universities we are talking about. How many of them are really getting government funding? And what is the percentage of government funding they are getting? The university in, Africa, in America has a budget of 46 billion naira. The whole budget of Nigeria is 43 billion naira. This university has only about 20% or 10% of that coming from government. Others are from endowment. Endowment that is strong. That is strong. Even what the government is giving them. That is that is my my ground. School fees. I'm sorry. I hope I will not disturb some people. Nigerian, you go to Nigerian universities. Your tuition fee in a year is less than two hundred dollars. What is what you feel what is the amount you put the 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 quantity the amount of money you put in place? Government claims that they are doing free education. Therefore, let students come to university. Let as many people come. Is the government still funding the infrastructure? To me, my understanding of the education system is that government caters more for the salaries of staff. Staff that are underpaid, staff that are not highly motivated to deliver, staff that needs to do some other things for them to survive. You know, that's the prayer we have. You took it from my box, I bet I would have loved to complete this way. Yeah. These universities are not really relying on school fees. Some of them created the Silicon Valley. Okay. Some of them... So in, in, outside Nigeria. Outside Nigeria. Yes. Outside Nigeria. Now I'll give you an example. Inside Nigeria. Yes. Two children sat down and created what we call Paystack. Yes. When Microsoft saw Paystack, Microsoft came here and bought it for $200 million. Yes. Is that the back of story? Uh, no, two boys. They are not even linked okay. to any university. Okay. They are graduates anyway, but okay. they, they went on they their own and used their skill to develop a program called Pesta. Pesta is being used by everybody in Africa yeah. today. That's right. They, they sold it for $200 million. Sir, in African universities, if you have 1,000 Pesta per university, or let me know that's true. That's true. Really. Let's say 100 pesta are investing yeah. in other sectors. Do you think that you'll be running after government for, for funding? My answer is yes. Because it's the, it's the act of each university. There is a limit to which you can seek for funds beyond the system in which you are operating. Uh, those who give money to universities outside the country, they don't give it for free. They give because they expect outputs. Research outputs that can be commercialized. But here, yeah, there are people who are very rich. I mean, of our rich people are interested in the university system. They are more or less interested in entertainment. They are interested in music. They are interested in dancing. Money is going there. But if what they are giving to entertainment can be transmitted to universities, I will tell you, university academics will rise up to the challenge. Sir, sir. you said something, I'm sorry, sir. You said something about school fees. Oh, yes. That perhaps the school fees that some students are paying is not enough. The government is not sincere. Okay. If the government is sincere with the Nigerian university system, what the government should do is to ask itself, what is the cost of producing a graduate in Nigeria's university system? What will it cost an, a parent, for example, to send a student to go and read pharmacy of or engineering? If by the time they look at the whole total cost, normal school fees cost, if the normal school fees and they find out that it's going to be two million, let the government put two million, then we now know that they are doing free education. The situations where that is not being done, the facilities for training, they are obsolete. You know, uh, you cannot get 
appropriate laboratory experiences because there is no fund. Students live in hostels that, you can, that is subhuman, which cannot really bring out their intellect, the, 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 what they are made up of. Those are the reasons why things and because are some schools, I'm not sorry, sir. Because some schools, I mean, some students pay exorbitant school fees. And they get and the best from it. Yes, because there are some who are less privileged, they can afford it. Right. You know, that's why the, the government is trying to assist so yes. that this can be possible. Yes. You know, so that means that um, the fee that they are paying is And the, the detriment mm -hmm. of the blood of the academics uh, the people in the university system who are not being who are seemingly underpaid. Mm. Now let us uh, go back to my drive. Yes. I insist, sir, that if something is not wrong with the curriculum, uh, just like you are something is that, many things <laughs> many things are wrong with the <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> I will tell you my stay my stand on the on the curriculum of African universities. Okay. Almost all the universities, except some new private ones, were set. The intention of the colonial masters in establishing universities was not because they want African countries to develop. All they were looking for are personnel who will service the civil service of the colonial system. Unfortunately, they are no longer here. But the universities are still using that age-long curricula and that curricula cannot really produce the manpower needed for now. Any university graduate now that thinks that when he or she finishes university he will get a place in the civil service is just joking because the ones who are there are not living and they are not dying and therefore for us to be relevant, for universities to be relevant today we need to be very pragmatic in reviewing or changing our curricula completely. So, so you are the Vice Chancellor, now you are the Secretary General of Africa, Association of African Universities. Yes. So what are you doing in that realm? Just saying it, people are listening to me. Okay, like I, I say, I, 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 I will tell you, in, I'm living here now for Abuja. For Abuja. In two weeks' time, we are going to have the World Conference on Higher Education in Barcelona, Spain. And I find out that almost every day, there are organizations where I must speak on for about five continuous days. And this is the message I'm passing through. I don't think that we are inferior to any, any other continent. We are not inferior. It's just that our political system has caged us in. It's high time that we use our knowledge the way other people are using their own knowledge. It's high time our government sees the relevance of universities and academicians to their development. It's high time that we put less emphasis on politics and put more emphasis on growing the future. When I sit in my office at Accra, as a secretary of the Association of African Universities, I don't look at my work as if I'm serving universities. I'm looking at my position as a position where I can help the future of Africa, the youth of Africa. And when I speak at different fora, I speak about the future. How can we build the youth needed for the Africa? How can our youth be relevant to our needs in African countries. Everywhere I go, that is my message. And I think I'm part, my message is being heard everywhere. Now, sir, I'm, go, I'm still on my main point. Yeah. Because I've discovered that we are looking for autonomy for our universities. Yes. You said the, the way they get funds is limited. There is the limitation on how they can source funds from outside. But if solutions are created, Funds will find them out. For instance, sir, you spoke about entertainment. They are putting money in entertainment. But this entertainment, too, like the theater arts, like the music, others also come from the universities. Yeah. They also come from the universities. Yes. So, for instance, if 
for instance, for that are developed to the extent of feeding the whole of Oku State and exporting palm oil, exporting cashew. Won't they get funds even for Nigeria? I will tell you the importance of funds. When, when they will get when was, themselves. When was Covenant University established? Not long ago, maybe about, it's not it's about 10 years ago. When was Redimas University established? Not too long. Will you believe that Redimas University is on the forefront of COVID research in the world? What's the difference? Money. Afe Babalala has, been, has just been ranked as number one university in Nigeria. Afe Babalala University. What's the difference? availability of funding coupled with quality of management of the system. If university, if paraventure universities get the appropriate funding, I think that they will prove to the world that they can make impact. The appropriate funding, sir, if they create solutions. So so yes. you, let me let me go let me go to the basics. Sir. Yes. Let me go to the basics. I'm looking at it in such a way whereby the cost we cut corners. Is it also true that we have half baked lecturers and produce half baked graduates that cannot bring solutions that we can say? I've been in the I've been in the university system now for 37 years. The average professor in the university system does not cut, cut corners. But the university system itself cut corners. In what ways? In what ways? Yeah. I was the vice chancellor. I cannot operate as a vice chancellor without having a policy body they, they call the council. And council members are appointed not because of their academic qualification. Or the expensive because of their political affiliations. When these people come in, they pollute the university system. Go to the university system, it's not the academics or the university people that cut corners with contractors. It is these so called political people that are infused into the university system. I, I, I have worked in many countries in, in Africa. Ghana, for example. If you are going to become, for you to be appointed as a council member in Ghana, they look for people with integrity. And many of them work. They serve the university system, not because they want to collect night allowance, sitting allowance. The infiltration of politicians into the university system has affected us. And I keep on say, telling people that when a vice chancellor is straightforward, go and look at the quality of the structures built by contractors in that place. But where politicians come in to do so many things, then contractors also join them. So that is in the wait, that is in the area of and administration yes. and management. And man I'm talking about, for instance, let me give you an example so that you know what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm talking about in the area of sex for Marx. I'm talking about in the area of money for Marx. I'm talking about <laughs> lecturers passing students that shouldn't be passed. I, I, I will tell you one thing. Those cases that you, are, you mentioned, yes. they are not denounced. In fact, the cases you are hearing nowadays is a reflection of the corruption in the society. I keep on saying something that you cannot pass through the university system and become a professor. The discipline that you need to have inculcated in you should make you to rise above all those vices that will now see manifesting. And, and, uh, not bought. and I tell you, the university system in Nigeria as it is today does not compromise with those acts. Really? Yes. With the news we're hearing, yeah. allow anywhere those things come to the for forefront, you find that the, the university system acts immediately to deal with such incidences. It's not the normal. And two, 
uh, project I look like that is the way I've survived in the university system, not just like a professor, but also like a, a Christian. And this has affected, yeah, past, oh, no, yeah, past, this has affected my <laughs> relationship. I believe that in places where we want to promote knowledge, we need to, as me, for example, I look at our young people in the university as my own children. And I have responsibilities to guide them. Many professors are like that in the university. The few cases you are hearing about, they are not the norms. So, sir, so, sir, so, please, 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 don't you think that artisans will not be holding this our economy? Because it's artisans that are holding this economy. Yeah. Now, a graduate of mechanical engineering will come outside and still take his car to the technician, the roadside technician. A professor and head of department of the mechanical engineering department will go and take his car to the technician by the roadside. What is wrong? So many things are wrong. Our foundation, our curriculum, our system of learning is wrong. I keep, I've been saying it this to many people. The way we teach in Nigeria today is out of date. Our teaching is absolute. Absolute, yes. Our teaching system in Nigeria today is still too centered on the teacher. We are too teacher centered. Rather than in other places, <coughs> the focus is on the learner. We need to change this system of teaching and learning to be from being teacher centered to becoming learner centered. Whereby your, your student can know more than the professor. In fact, the world is so free now that anybody who knows how to really make sure the internet can get any information that you need. And situations where in the past your professor expects you to cram all the lecture notes that he has given you, and if you fail to pour it down line for line, the, he wrote the way he had given you, you won't score high. Those who make it with that system, those are the ones that cannot be practical with the way they already they operate. The world today, in fact, young people will be listening to me now. The world is changing. It's not those who cram things now that survive. It's people who are innovative. People who hear from, get information, process the information, and see what you can do to, to, to bring out something out of you better than the information that you have taken. And that's why we still need many professors don't know how to teach. The fact that you have a, a PhD does not mean that you can Pass out, I mean, you can deliver knowledge to other people. And that's why we need to have a system. And I believe that we are getting it. Some years ago, Professor Okebukola organized a learning course for university professors, whereby professors, PhD holders, are still taught on pedagogy, how to teach. Those, that type of a, an orientation is still needed for university system. If not, we will be wasting the future of our young people. If we just allow them to come to the university, they cram all they want to cram, and they are irrelevant to their situation. What is the purpose of knowledge? It's not just to acquire information. Use that knowledge to make some impact. Then you'll be satisfied that you are educated. Well, you said something about autonomy. So are we saying that it's not feasible for public universities to have full autonomy? Why not? There's a university in Ghana. Government university who told the government keep your money, we shall survive without you. Wow. Uh -huh. In terms of morality, you know, he was mentioning something about... It. And the government there allows that university to survive. And that's what university is making 
great impact. You know? Autonomy, yes. There are some universities who can tell you, if the government will allow some universities to, to be on their own, they can survive without their government. You know? If the private ones are surviving, why not the public ones too? But I know that we have a lot of related things to do. One, we've turned the university to be... We need to run our university on some business principles. You know, not everybody who bears the name lecturer is qualified to teach. If you are not caught into that area and you find yourself that you are just wasting people's time and people's future. And two, if I have to set up a university today, I will not feel it up with administrators. Unfortunately, in the Nigerian system, everything goes. But if we have set a system that needs a change, but that person, that vice chancellor, who will effect that change, we have many battles to fight. Okay, sir. Uh, talking about cultism, cultism as being a canker one, it's a deep into the education system and causing a lot of problems. Can't any, you know, anti cult groups be created in schools with the aim of stopping cult practices, you know, in higher institutions and arresting offenders, you know, to the point of prosecution? Yeah, cultism is free. It's not just in the university, in the past. We thought, that, secondary, primary, secondary <laughs> we thought that courtism is only in the university. Do you know that meat sellers in the market? Vulcanizers. Vulcanizers now belong to courts. I think it's a, it's a sad moral issue, reflection of the society in which I I wish that we have a re-engineering of our society. Uh, a reorientation of the morals of our people. Unfortunately, all these things starts with the type of politics we play now. The type of people that we put in place to lead us, they dictate or dictate the type of society that is following them. Okay, so where did the parents, you know, because of all these vices, um, moral issues that we have in our schools today, where did the parents get it wrong? Parents get it wrong, wrong in that Morality has failed, has fallen down completely in many families. And uh, many parents are not responsible. Mm. Really, I'm sorry to say, many parents are not responsible. And this reflects in the type of children that they have. I, you, well, you may even think that it's only the children of the rich. What I now find out is that the children of the poor when they go to the university, as soon as they get admitted into a university, they become bosses over their own parents. Their parents cannot control them again. How we can do that, I really do not know. I said we pray for this country. I remember that when I was in school, you know, we had this small cell that the normal any time you enter into the school, see parents remember when you dress provocatively, they take you, pick you up and go throw you in the cell. And then they leave you after school hours. You know, that's when they release you. So these are that this helped them then. So anybody that was about to they could they, 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 But now they, I don't think if you do that now, they will tell you about human rights. And if uh, you do that to a grad an undergraduate in the public university in Nigeria, they can sue the university and sue the person concerned. No, you pay through your nose. Yes. yes. Sir, you, you keep on talking about politics, you keep on talking about government. But I look at government and I see the academia having a higher percentage of government. How really? many? Percentage? Yes. When I say academia, that academia many, are, many of them are going to. They are graduates. They are graduates, yes. 90% are graduates. Yes, you are correct. The House of Rep, most of them are graduates. You are correct. The Senate, most of them are graduates. In fact, the current vice president is a professor. So, why? Are you in the academia in Asu creating a fine line of battle, a battle line between yourselves? You create a battle line. This is government, this is academics, yes. yet 
The whole of government is academics. You see, some academia. People, some people. is the academia. Some people must be conscious of the society. If all of us decide to be like every other person, there will not be anybody to pinch up and say that things are not going on well. If things have been going on well in this country, there will not be need for organizations like ASU to complain. Sometimes I believe that ASU is not just people think that ASU is talking about their own salaries alone. No. ASU is also concerned about the way the government is, is going, the society. These graduates who are in the, in the house, I think our system corrupts them as soon as they joined politics. Let us have a country whereby they, they pay less to the politicians. You will find out that quality people will go there. The university is not a, a, a holy place. It's a place of mixed cultures. In the university you find good people, you also have bad people. And probably the bad people find it easy to leave the university and go into politics. Sir, IPPIS, you know, it's under the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation. What is wrong with the use of IPPIS for university staff salaries payment? On the surface, you would think it's a good system. But it's a system that has not been programmed to cater for, the, for university development. In a university, you should you have some you you take some people on a sabbatical. You can invite an academician from Ghana to come to your university for just thirty months. You can get a good scientist in another university to come to your university and serve you for a short period. IPPIS hasn't got that provision. What IPPIS says that so far as let's say you are in University A and you are in that IPPIS, your name should not appear again that you are being paid. Therefore, sabbatical leave that uh, academicians use to navigate and get their students from other places is more or less hindered. With the IPPIS, a foreign graduate, a foreign lecturer, we find it difficult to be employed by a vice chancellor for a short period. So those are the things that people are talking about, IPIS, coupled with the fact that the people behind it are not sincere. So, uh, how will you be saying that you want to tell the, your employer how to be paid when a university in Ghana can survive without government and you are here for the past 40 years for the past 40 years you are using the same idea to fight government for your, for, for what you need strikes no. what is the ingenuity of knowledge that you are you are, you are supposed to be offering us when you are stereotyped i give you a case six years ago naira dollar rate 150 naira to one dollar. Now it is now 500 and something naira to one dollar. And unconsciously, your network worth has gone down. And you, as a university staff, you can no longer compete in that profession you call because of your new salary. I think that everybody should be entitled to what you produce. I mean, if you worked, you need to be paid for it. That is the idea. It's not that they are saying, go on strike. I will tell you, if you are in a country, in a system, where you work very hard, and you can't even save five thousand dollars in a year as a professor. 
yet some people can cough out 100 million naira. Not doing better than what you are doing, then you need to code the system. So the strike that you are seeing is the outcome of what the system is. My questions are really get my questions. Are. I'm not so you are not saying, I'm why can't we tell the government to, government, don't pay us. We no, shall survive. No, 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 sir. No, sir. No, sir. We have professors, we have lecturers. In the... Now, sir, we, we've talked about the dictation to the employer, if, if answered. But you are using strike for the past 40 years. You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you got peanuts, needs assessment, third phone. The problems are still there. Even the agreement to sign in 2009, you want it to be updated by the exchange rate and all that. Now, your people are also in government, they are restricted. As professors, as lecturers, that you should be the custodian of knowledge. Can't you, through whatever research, through whatever thing, evolve other kinds of solution other than strike, you know, retarding the future of our children? I have no answer really. My outlook on that is this the alternative to strike, the alternative to violence, the alternative to conflicts is good governance. And the question is what else will ASU have done? Can ASU develop a system whereby our new political leaders? and learn to go through a sort of reorientation so that their mindset will be really changed. And so you are going back to the same yeah. political leaders. Leaders. Then two, can our own people our society change their ways? For example, election is coming. What can we do to help our people not to collect 30,000 dollars naira only to sell out their next four years or five years. Uh, because of time, sir. Because the of other time. alternative that ASU, you think that ASU could do is that can't the ASU people opt out of the university system, set up their own university, and then show the world? No, no, not really, sir. Can't FUTA, for instance, or all federal universities of technology yes. okay. produce solutions okay. that is sellable? Can't even FUNAB produce enough food? That we feed the whole of Africa. These are the issues. Those, when I, when, when I was a vice chancellor at the Federal University of Agriculture, Bukuta, yes, people told me that can't your university now flood the whole of this city with maize? You can't produce maize. You can't produce all those food stuff when you do not even have the resources to grow them. So the so why can't you have? Why can't the, you produce seedlings that are superlative in production? And they said they are doing that, but the um, the ability to upgrade it to the level that you bring the type of income necessary to make impact is the issue. Why are they not also doing that in federal universities of technologies, bringing out solutions that can be sold to uh, entrepreneurs and uh, and you can also so why can't we also adopt the system in in, uh, in get, get Silicon Valley's and then flood them? I think we shall get there. Okay, thank you so much. I think uh, this is where we will call it a day with uh, our great professor, Professor Yewoli, who is currently the, the, the Secretary General of all African university, universities in their association. We will be having a wonderful time with you. My own name is Paul Oni, and I have Paul Ajihese. Daybreak, 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 the daybreak show.